We've got a full house of cheering fans, including Earl B, the home team's biggest fan. It's Friday, October 19th, and welcome once again to George Daniel Stadium. Good evening, everyone. I'm Ron Bacalar, along with my partner, Barry Buck, our cameraman, producer, and director, Joe Bach. And we're going to be bringing you the exciting play-by-play -play action of tonight's football game with the Lorraine Southview Saints playing host to the Red Riders of Painesville Harvey. And it's almost impossible to believe already, Barry, this is the ninth week of high school football, just one more week remaining. The Southview Saints are two and six on the season. The Red Raiders are three and five. Talking to coach Tony Shoulders, he's indicated that this team that they're going to play tonight is probably the most even balanced team as far as comparisons are concerned. How can we uh, expect to see what kind of an outcome tonight, Barry? Well, a couple of things, Ron. I, I think uh, Southview has uh, played a lot bigger, a lot stronger teams than tonight. This team's a little more evenly matched. Second of all, I think Southview found themselves a quarterback. They moved uh, this Messer kid to the quarterback who'd been a wide receiver and defensive back. He threw for 200 plus yards. I think Tony's found himself something to help balance out the running game. And to indicate the reason why uh, Messer is the quarterback tonight and was last week and in the closing moments of the game we did here at George Daniel two weeks ago, his starting quarterback, Mark Majoris, is out with a broken collarbone and the replacement quarterback also with a broken collarbone. We'll talk about that and much more and the opening kickoff right after this timeout. Mom, Dad. You are miserable parents. I went to my friends. You called ahead. Invaded my privacy. My privacy. I hated it. I hated it. I thought you were the worst parents in the world. Thanks. Action ready to get underway here at George Daniel Stadium. Josh Fossey kicking off from his 35. Southview already before the game starts had a flag for delay of game. Coming out of the locker room just a bit too late. And with the kickoff for Painesville, Sean Jackson tackled by Josh Henderson. So the Red Raiders take over now first and 10 from their own 37-yard line. Checking the starting offensive lineup for the Red Raiders at center is number 56, a 175-pound junior, Dave White. The guards are Nathan Sellers, a 240-pound senior, and Aaron Humphreys, a 180-pound senior. The quarterback is Tom Lamazny, a 170-pound freshman. And the give oh, is wide open. two. Oh, Ron South, you got a big break there. They just ran a reverse and a pass. He was wide open. He was out of bounds. Big break there for the Saints. Trickery on the first play of the game. <laughs> we have a Chris Mann in the uh, backfield for uh, the Red Raiders. The give this time is to Sean Jackson, who picked up the kickoff, picked up about uh, four yards on the play. It'll be third down and six for Painesville. The tackles, by the way, are Justin Huffman, a 212-pound senior, and Kevin Schroeder, a 175-pound junior. The tight end is Frankie Spikes, a 205-pound junior. And quarterback Lamazny is going to be thrown for a loss. And the tackle made by Josh Henderson for the Saints. It'll be fourth down and a punting situation. Ron, while we're down on this end of the field, uh, some of the viewers may know it's a little darker down there. Uh, we had electrical problem. One of the bank of lights was uh, damaged this past week. So it's a little darker in that uh, corner of the end zone, corner of the field. But like was pointed out to us, as dark as it appears to be, that's about how bright it was with the old lights. Yeah, Ray told us that a little earlier. 
Good snap from center, and the punt is in the air. Justin Portick doing the punting, and Southview will now take over on the uh, punt, uh, Marquell Miller. The Southview Saints will now take over from their own 38-yard line, first and 10. Offensively for the Saints, starting at uh, center is Ferris Stevens, a senior. The guards are Brian Joyner, a sophomore, and Gary Atkins, a junior. The tackles are Ryan Humphreys, a senior, and Josh Henderson, a junior. The split end is Marquell Miller, a sophomore. The other end is Tadarian Wilson, a senior. The give right up the middle at quarterback is Jason Messer, a junior. The tailback is Terrence Beard, a senior. Tackle made by Frankie Spikes for the Red Raiders. And the two running backs are Sean Nixon, a junior, and John Brown, a sophomore. Tonight here at George Daniel Stadium is the final home game for the Southview Saints. They travel to take on the Euclid Panthers to wrap up the high school football season, the regular season next week, Friday. So they honored all the seniors, band members, football players, cheerleaders. In the flats, the pat goes to Sean Nixon, looking for running room to the 40, the 45, still on his feet, and finally knocked out of bounds at about the 49-yard line. If that's where they spot it, it should be a first down. Lucas Gibson covering for the Red Raiders. Ron, there was a fine one-on-one -on -one play. Uh, Nixon caught the ball behind the line of scrimmage. Painesville had it kind of trapped in. He faked one guy out and was able to get uh, close to the first down. Well, they're spotting it on the 47-yard line, so that makes it shy of a first down by about a yard. It's third and one now for the Southview Saints. And the give right up the middle to the tailback. Terrence Beard picks up the first down, gets the ball across the midstripe into Red Raider territory. I think he thought that was the case where he was going to get hit and uh, kind of lost his balance, although if he stays on his feet, he had a long way to go. Defensively for the Red Raiders, the uh, tackles are Nathan Sellers and Justin Hoffman, the two defensive ends, Dave White and Kevin Schroeder. In motion, Sean Nixon coming to the near side. Jason Messer, the quarterback, going back to pass over 200 yards last week and just beyond the outstretched hands of his intended receiver, Markwell Miller. On the incomplete pass, second down and 10. The defensive linebackers for the Red Raiders on the inside, Aaron Humphreys and Frankie Spikes. On the outside, Sean Jackson and Kevin Wright. The cornerbacks are Lucas Gibson and Odell Parker, and the safety is Chris Mann. Ron, I think you're going to see more of that out of Southview. Uh, Painesville is playing tight man-to-man. -man. Right up on the line of scrimmage. Look for that play. Look for them to come back to that. In motion, John Brown. Messer back to pass again. Good protection right up the middle, and Markwell Miller just couldn't quite hang on. Incomplete pass. It's now third down and 10. It's a tough pass. We're asking the young man to go left, turn square shoulders up and through it. The ball was a little high, but Markwell should have, should have been able to bring that one down. Coming in the lineup now for the Southview Saints, Adam Figueroa bringing the play in from the bench. Sean Nixon in motion, coming to the near side. Messer back to pass, being hit in the backfield, gets the ball away and into the hands of Sean Nixon. He is over the 30-yard line, a big first down play for the Southview Saints. And what a fantastic catch by Sean Nixon. That was a heck of a throw. He had a kid in his face, and as soon as he let that go, he got, he got stuck. Ron, I think Southview got away with one there. Nixon uh, started to break toward the line of scrimmage. Should have been in, in motion. He's got to run straight across or behind till the ball snapped. Maybe he thought he was in arena football or <laughs> Canadian, but I think they got a break there. Ball spotted just inside the 30-yard line. We are in the first quarter of play. No score in this ball game. And the give is to Terrence Beard. Beard through the left side of the line, picks up a couple of yards on the play. 
tackle made by Frankie Spikes. Early in the game, Ron, that's three times we've uh, mentioned that young man already. If you, if you watched Southview a couple weeks ago and watch him tonight, it's a little different offense. Now they don't have that tailback. And they've got him spread out. Now they have a young man that can throw the ball. John Brown in motion. Messer back to pass, looking over the middle and almost intercepted right into the hands of Frankie Spikes. He just could not hold on, and he knew he had the golden opportunity there. He stepped right in front of that, and he had a lot of room in front of him. 6'2", 200 yeah. pounds, good-sized linebacker. Third down, third and eight for the Southview Saints. Another big third down play, and the officials are calling a timeout. Looks like an equipment problem. We were indicating at the uh, top of the show that uh, this is the third quarterback now for Coach Tony Shoulders. The initial starting quarterback, Mark Majoris, uh, about midway through the season, uh, broke his collarbone right at the beginning of the uh, game. And then Ricky Thomas, his replacement, wound up breaking his collarbone two weeks ago in a JV game. Well, they did balance it out. One has a broken left collarbone and one has a broken right collarbone. Yes. So they can help each other out. <laughs> the pass. Uh, Tony's the intended, always been one to try to balance things out. And the intended receiver, Jeremy Coleman, incomplete pass. It's fourth down. However, the Saints are in fourth down territory on the 28-yard line. Obviously, they're going for it with 7.46 remaining in the first quarter. Painesville took the opening kickoff, and the Saints defense just held them. Three and out, and a loose ball. Fumble on the play by Messer. He was able to get it, and there is a whistle and a flag over on the far side, and right smack dab where the ball was. It's going to be a false start. And that's the indication, false start against the uh, Southview Saints. They'll march off five yards, bring the ball back to the 32-yard line, where it's now fourth down and about 13. Having watched uh, Jason Messer play before, wide receiver, catch the ball and run with it, look for him pretty soon to go back and tuck it and keep it and go. They do have him rolling left and right probably to help protect him a little bit, get the heat off the pass rush. Jeremy Coleman back in the lineup for the Southview Saints, split wide to the right. Sean Nixon now in motion. Messer back to pass, gets the good protection to Markwell Miller. Markwell hanging on and gets the first down for the Southview Saints on about the 15-yard line where it's going to be first and 10. What Southview's doing, Ron, is they're putting a man in motion and making uh, Painesville Harvey bring their two defenders to this side, leaving Markwell Miller one-on-one. -on -one. Young man's an athlete, he's a basketball player. Coming into this ball game, Markwell Miller had 20 receptions for 349 yards. That's 17 and a half yards per reception on average. He about carried that right there. That was about 17 yards too. Messer hands off to Sean Nixon. Nixon looking for some running room and uh, may have lost maybe about a yard on the play. Frankie spikes again. In on the tackle. That was the case there, Ron. I think uh, Sean would have been a little better off just trying to take it outside and use his speed. He tried to cut it up inside and got into the flow of the defense. He should have stayed a little wide. Loss of a short yard on the play, second down. And about 11. Nixon again in motion, coming to the near side. And the pass is to Nixon in the flats, and he's not going to go anywhere. In fact, hit again for another loss. Sean Jackson in on the tackle. And that's the play they ran in the first series run, and Painesville was waiting for it. Third down and 12 now for the Saints. The referee is Vince Kelly. The umpire is Bob Jones. Lineman is Brett Collins. The line judge, Elmer Lippert, and the back judge, Dave Rudolph. 
Jason Messer, the quarterback for the Saints. Terrence Beard, the tailback. Sean Nixon, John Brown, the running backs. And Messer almost tackled in the backfield, tried to get the ball off to Terrence Beard. Ron, you see quarterbacks have been playing for three, four, five years since CYO. Not have enough game recognition to know to just dump the ball to your tailback and uh, keep keep the loss and try to keep them in field goal position. Had he gotten sacked, they probably would have been out of range. As of now, we're looking at, what, 32? Well, Josh Fossey is going to 35. attempt the field goal, and the ball is on about the 25, make it 35-yard, 35 35-yard 35 field goal attempt. Good snap, ball is down in the air, and it is good. The Southview Saints with 5.52 remaining in the ball game, or in the first quarter, getting on the scoreboard first. Kind of get the feeling this is not my night. <laughs> I think Tony Shoulders will be happy that was the, in the fourth quarter because he's ahead. <laughs> and we'll be back with the uh, kickoff right after this brief timeout. They came from every corner of the country, from small towns and big cities. They all shared one thing in common. They belonged to a family called Marines. A tough and determined few dedicated to protecting everything we hold sacred. And still, they come. Celebrate the 225 year history of those proud few who have earned the title Marine. Josh Fossey on the kickoff, this time from the 40, a high kick taken on about the 20, or make that the 17-yard line, and it's Odell Parker with the kickoff return for the Red Raiders, brings it out to the 26-yard line. John Stefanczyk making the tackle for the Southview Saints. There's a case run where Sean Nixon got down there, didn't make the tackle, but slowed the ball carrier up, made him reverse his field, which allowed Stefanczyk and Marquette Miller to take him down. So you don't get the stats, but the kicking coaches know how important that was. Nine-yard kickoff return by Odell Parker. It's first and ten for the Red Raiders. The ball is on their 26-yard line. Tom Lamazny, the quarterback, hands it off to his fullback, Eric Ridnauer, a 245-pound junior. I just wondered how long it was going to take him to get to him. That's a good size uh, oh, fullback, 240 pounds. I, I think they tried to loosen him up a little bit, and I look for them to button it up a little bit and go at him. Gain of two yards on the play, second down and eight. Ball is on the 28-yard line. Lamazny back to pass, and no one from Painesville in the area. I would suspect the intended receiver might have been or could have been Terrence Litton. However, for the Southview Saints, Jeremy Coleman almost able to make the uh, interception. Ron, I got to believe that was a read pattern. They looked at the defense, and if it's a certain way, he's supposed to go outside, and if it's a... Southview's line up differently. They go inside and one red one, one red the other. On the incomplete pass, third down and eight. Again, Lamazny back to pass over to the near side. Hits the Ooh. big fullback. And boy, he just bowled right over. And finally making the stop, Robert Wilson for the Southview Saints. But uh, the big fullback, Ridnauer, able to get the ball into Southview territory. On the 49-yard line, first and 10. Now, there's a difference between a fullback and a wide receiver and a tailback. They would have tried to run around that defender. He was just going to run over him. He didn't particularly care who was in his way. He was going over oh, through him. And That's a, a big play. They were, they were within one step of having hold of the quarterback, and he got free and threw a nice pass.
Lamazny again back to pass. This time it is intercepted by the Southview Saints, and they will now take over first and ten, making the uh, interception for Southview, Steve Greer. I think that was made possible by, uh, uh, I want to say Josh Henderson tipped that. John, yeah, Josh Henderson tipped that ball, which allowed the interception to occur. That's a big break for the Saints. They're their side of the plus side of the field and four down territory probably. They're on Painesville's 40-yard line, first and 10. Sometimes run on a turnover like that, you want to come out and try to strike real quick, so maybe Southie's going to come out and put it up right now. Jason Messer, the quarterback, in motion, Sean Nixon. Gets the snap from Ferris Stevens, back to pass, coming over, and it's up in the air, incomplete. The intended receiver, John Brown, it's second down and 10. Ron, I gotta wonder why they keep rolling him to the left. He, he might be doing a little better if he'd come to this side. I also noticed that we're not the only uh, TV station here this evening. I see a truck across the way there. Yes, WHHS, which stands for uh, Harvey High School, Painesville Harvey High School, Channel 30, if I'm not mistaken, and that is quite a truck that they have. <laughs> Our producer director, Joe Box, says he has the identical equipment but he sure would love to have a truck like that. And the give is to Terrence Beard. Beard to the 10. He's to the 5, and he's in the end zone. Touchdown. A 40-yard touchdown run by Terrence Beard with 4-11 remaining in the first quarter. I think Painesville was looking pass all the way. Rush, and he just went right by him on a um, trap. That was a nice call. Josh Fossey will attempt the extra point. Messer will hold. Much more uh, diverse uh, offense here from Southview than we saw a couple weeks ago. Good snap, ball is down in the air, and it is good. So with 4-11 remaining in the first quarter of play, it's the Southview Saints 10, Painesville Harvey, nothing. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this timeout. Was in another lifetime, one of toil and blood. When blackness was a virtue, the road was. If we do not take responsibility for saving animals from extinction, we allow a part of ourselves to die with them. Help World Wildlife Fund protect animals in the places where they live by ordering a free action kit. Together, we can leave our children a living planet. Come in, she said, I'll give you shelter from the storm. And another kickoff by Josh Fossey from the 40, and it's a good kick. Coming down to the 15-yard line, and it's taken by Odell Parker, who is brought down inside the 35. Adam Figueroa making the tackle for the Southview Saints. It'll be first and 10 for Painesville Harvey from their own 32-yard line. We were talking about the uh, Harvey High School television uh, wagon across the field there. Uh, quite a piece of equipment uh, as far as a vehicle is concerned. When we indicated that the equipment on the inside is exactly what uh, TV20 has, I meant to say it's exactly the kind of equipment that our director Joe Bach owns. It doesn't belong to Lorraine City Schools. It's his own personal equipment. A loss on the play of about uh, a yard, yard and a half. It'll be second down. And let's make it 12. Second and 12, the ball is on the 30-yard line. You know, Ron, you mentioned earlier that this is the ninth week of football. If you look at the weather, you'd think it's the second or third. It's a perfect, I mean, there's not a wind blowing, there's nothing. It's a I perfect night. I can't remember sitting in this press box with the window open this late in the season. A long pass downfield to the intended receiver, Odell Parker, and almost intercepted by Southview's Robert Wilson. Also in on the coverage, Jeremy Coleman on the far side of the field. Ron, we were here Wednesday night doing the uh, junior high, or the middle school series, and it got quite chilly. It's probably a good 20 degrees warmer tonight than it was two days ago. And you're right to be in the uh, third week of October and be in our shirt sleeves is uh, 
with Quite the window amazing. open. With the window open. Oh, wow. Either some movement on the offensive line or a very energetic defensive lineman for the Southview Saints. We'll sort this one out after the officials find out. The Saints seem to be applauding, so it just may be some movement on that offensive line. Ron, you have to be careful in that situation. Even though the lineman moves, that doesn't give you the right to, to really crush him. I mean, they could easily call a dead ball foul on that personal foul, so they have to be careful. It is illegal procedure against the Red Raiders. The ball is back on their own 25-yard line where it is now third down and 18. Southview better loosen their uh, defenders up a little bit. And the big fullback with the ball. Eric Ridenauer, tackled by Sean Nixon, brings the ball out to the 35-yard line. John Brown also in on the stop. Short of a first down, it's fourth and seven. That's a good call by Painesville. If the big guy gets loose and gets a block or two, he may get up there. He don't take the chance of turning it over or forcing or getting sacked. That's a good call. A lot of game left. Justin Portick. Standing on his 21-yard line, he'll do the punting for the Red Raiders. Good snap. And the punt coming to the near side, grabbed by Southview's Adam Figueroa. Tackled almost immediately on the 35-yard line, where the Saints will now take over first and 10. We've got two minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. They're spotting the ball on the 36-yard line. Southview ahead by a score of 10 to nothing. Last week, the Southview Saints went against a very, very tough Shaker Heights team, but Tony Shoulders said at the end of the half, the score was only Shaker Heights 21, Southview 14. Southview was able to hold its own against that uh, big team, and then they let Greg Pruitt loose in the uh, second half. Messer keeping the ball. He's going to lose a yard on the play. Back to the 35. It'll be second down and 11. Coach Shoulders said that Pruitt was given the ball the vast majority of the time, scored a total of five touchdowns in the game, and he ran behind those big six foot three, six foot four linemen, 240, 250, 305 pounds. And they just pounded away at Southview's defense. Final score was Shaker Heights 54, Southview 14. John Brown in motion. Messer back to pass and connects with Markwell Miller. Markwell Miller on the reception at about the 42 yard line. That's a nice pass run. It was thrown low and, and uh, hard down to the ground so the only one's gonna catch it is Markwell. There's not much chance of an interception on that pass. Ball was on the 35, it's now on the 42. A uh, pickup of seven yards on the pass play. It's third down and four. Since they had a second and 11, third and four now. Messer hands oh, off to Terrence counter. Beard and Terrence is hit right at the 40 yard line. A loss on the play of at least two yards. It'll be fourth down and the first punting situation for the Saints. Making the stop for the Red Raiders, Nathan Sellers, a 240-pound tackle. That's where the case where the Safi went back to the play that they scored the touchdown on. Josh Fossey doing the punting, standing on his 27-yard line. Good snap. Fossey gets the foot to the ball. He is knocked to the ground, got the ball away. And it is taken by Lucas Gibson for the Red Raiders, who advances the ball to the 42-yard <laughs> line. It'll be first and 10 for the Red Raiders from their own oh, 42. There's a fumble, fumble, and it looks like Southview's got wow. the ball. Well, a fumble on the play, and uh, Southview has taken another uh, turnover and put it to their advantage. Ron, there was a case where the referee was uh, looking for his flag, and then... Couldn't get it out, so he decided maybe he thought the ball was tipped, but the kicker was definitely uh, 
there was contact made, but if the ball's tipped, then it's a live play. So what you're saying is if the defensive player manages to touch the ball that is being punted in any way, shape, or form. He's, the punter is alive. Then if the ball touches the ground on the snap, he's live. From the uh, Painesville 42-yard line, Messer passing near side. Sean Nixon just could not hang we on. We have another flag. Covering on the play for the Red Raiders was Chris Mann. Could be a defensive hold. And there is a flag on the 35-yard line. Pass interference. Pass interference against the Red Raiders. That again, Ron, in high school is 15 yards. From the and line an automatic of for, From the line of scrimmage, an automatic first down. You see it in the pros. It's wherever it happens, they call it and put the ball there. But it's maximum 15 yards. Well, we got a minute, Ron. A couple weeks ago, we had a call the last week, I believe, that I just couldn't understand why it wasn't either third and 20 or first and 25. I checked with a couple people. In fact, Tim Alcorn from EOL told me he had the same call at the Lyria Shaker, and they changed the rule that if it's a dead ball foul, there's no longer first and 25. They thought it put the offense in too much of a hole, so they penalized the 15 yards and then moved the sticks back and make it first and 10. So I want to, the referees were correct. I want to stand corrected and questioning their calls. Well, we appreciate the uh, research work that you've done and the information. Same type of thing we wondered a few years back when we didn't see the runners coming out of the end zone after a kickoff. And we couldn't understand the reason why, not knowing that there was a rule that says you can't do that anymore. Messer back to pass, coming near side, and had two uh, receivers, Sean Nixon and Jeremy Coleman, neither one able to grab it. So it's second down and 10 on the incomplete pass. Usually when you see two receivers that close to each other, Somebody was not where they were supposed to be because that brings more defenders. And I notice now that uh, Southview's going to uh, Faken left and, and bringing Messer on a boot, which is helping take some of the pressure off. Because as he's rolling left, he's been getting rocked pretty good. So they're going to have to try to protect him a little bit. 11 seconds remaining in the first quarter. 10-0 our score. Southview in the lead. Threatening to score again, Messer rolling to his left, and he is going to be tackled for a loss back to the 35-yard line. And uh, looks like a 73, but I don't see one of those here. Well, we'll make it a 74, Justin Hoffman. <laughs> and that's the end of the first quarter play with the score. Southview 10, Painesville nothing. We'll be back with the second quarter right after this timeout. Since 1921, your hometown financial professionals at First Federal Savings of Lorraine have dedicated themselves to meeting the financial needs of their customers and surrounding communities. They offer a wide variety of financial investments as well as home mortgages to meet your every need. Loans on boats, cars, mobile homes, and other worthwhile purchases are also available. Whatever your financial need, First Federal Savings of Lorraine is ready to help. Seven convenient locations to serve you in Lorraine, Huron, Sandusky, Port Clinton, and now at 36690 Detroit Road in Avon. First Federal Savings of Lorraine is an equal housing lender and FDIC insured. Well, there's that Painesville City Local Schools WHHS Channel 30 TV truck that we were talking about moments ago. Wondering if we might have some corporate sponsors uh, here in Lorraine. You know, it's amazing. TV 20 has been on the cable system, Adelphia's cable system, for over a decade now. And uh, you would think by now we'd be able to have something as nice as what Painesville has and what Westlake has and what Strongsville has. You know, this is an upcoming uh, city here in Lorraine. Great bond issue coming up. Wow! And all kind of flags <laughs> coming down. That's a new legal receiver. I think yes. a lineman caught that ball. <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, the uh, reception was made by Josh Henderson. And you know, there isn't anybody on that field going to take that pass away from him. <laughs> Needless to say, uh, the ball is about uh, eight yards back from the line of scrimmage, which was just inside the 35. So we'll let the officials sort it out. Actually, 
just found out that uh, WLCS TV 20 is the third oldest uh, television facility belonging to a public school in a public school system. And uh, well, just, just one man's opinion, uh, what equipment uh, is available to us is antiquated at best. And really, we, uh, we need to thank our director, Joe Bach, for the use of his own personal equipment to uh, give the fine showing that we have on TV20. And the, and the coverage of different sports. We've done volleyball and middle school football and soccer. On a punting situation, Josh Fossey. And it's taken back on the 19-yard line by Odell Parker. Parker coming to the near side and finally brought down on about the 34 by Sean Nixon. You know, Ron, one of the things that may be helping uh, Fossey is, as most of the viewers know, he's a soccer player. And their soccer season ended earlier this week, I believe Monday evening. So now he's not out kicking the ball a couple hundred times a day. Legs getting a little rest, and uh, he's put quite a foot into the field goal plus this uh, long punt. He's been a good weapon for Southview this evening. And I feel very remiss in uh, doing that soccer match between King and Southview. I talked about Gareth Hannigan being on the football team and never once mentioned Josh Fossey being on Southview's football team as well as the Southview soccer team. So we want to make that perfectly clear. Josh Fossey just as instrumental for the Saints in the kicking game as Gareth Hannigan uh, has been for Admiral King. Well, we talked earlier in the year, Ron, where the Lorraine City Schools and, and most schools have kids that do that. Now, the Southwest, Southwest Conference refuses to allow kids to play. Cantu uh, for Amherst, three-year soccer player, quit to play football. Port, three-year player at Avon Lake, quit to play football. Second and eight, and a fumble in the backfield, recovered by the Red Raiders, but they'll have a big loss back to about the 29-yard line. Covering on the play for the Southview Saints, Ron Soto. Coming out of the ball game uh, just a bit ago uh, with a... Uh, appeared to be a back injury, Armando Rivera. Certainly hope he'll be all right. Kind of walking it off on the sidelines here. On the big third down play, back to pass for the Red Raiders, Tim Lamazny. Incomplete pass, almost. Well, Ron, if that ball would have been thrown on this sidelines, uh, I think Coach Shoulders would have been right in the uh, middle of that uh, pass deflection. He was down the field and on the field, but luckily the play was on the other side. Tony's a ex-defensive back coach at the collegiate level. He probably really gets into that. I noticed that uh, Jason Messer, who used to play defense, is now on the sidelines. And Tony figures he, this is the last chance he has, so he's going to save his quarterback. And that's the indication he gave me when I asked him uh, last night, calling him for the starting lineups. A short punt high in the air, Justin Portnick, and it's down by the Red Raiders on their own 40-yard line. So again, the Southview Saints with excellent field position, first and 10 from the Red Raiders' 40-yard line. 10.02 remaining in the second quarter, Southview with the lead, 10-0. Ron, Southview's going to have to capitalize on these turnovers. They keep getting the ball inside the 50. Last time they got it there, they didn't do anything with it. They're going to have to uh, start making use of these good field positions. Sean Nixon in motion, and the handoff is to Terrence Beard. Beard to the 30. Beard finally knocked down on about the 26-yard line, just over the 25, and it was Jamie Farron making the Touchdown saving tackle. Uh, I think you're going to have to give an assist to the umpire. Terrence Beard ran into the umpire and it slowed him down. So I think is that Bob Jones that's the umpire? The umpire is, in fact, Bob Jones. We'll have to give him an assist. Okay. First and 10 for the Southview Saints on the 25 yard line. Nixon again in motion. 
to give again to Terrence Beard. Beard breaking in the open. He's to the five. He's in the end zone. Touchdown. A 25-yard touchdown run by Terrence Beard. That is his second big TD run in this ball game. Ron, I think uh, Painesville's become so pass conscious that they were looking for the boot that time, and they handed the ball off instead of and Messer had a great fake. He came out here. I really thought he had I thought he had the ball. He faked out our cameraman. He was down here in the corner with the quarterback. Josh Fossey on the point after. Messer will do the holding. Good snap. Ball down. Kick in the air. And it is good. 9.27 remaining in the first half. And it's Southview 17. Painesville Harvey nothing. Back with the opening kickoff right after this. Your one-stop place for something really special is Impressions, corner of Oberlin Avenue and Tower Boulevard. T-shirts and sweatshirts personally designed to your specific needs. Anything from bears, trains to zebras, and specially designed hats as well. And don't forget Impressions, your one-stop spot for school jackets. See Dave, the designer expert at Impressions, Oberlin Avenue at Tower Boulevard, right here in Lorraine. Josh Fossey will be kicking off. It certainly is not the opening kickoff by any stretch <laughs> of the imagination. And a great kick by Fossey. Lands on the 10 and rolls into the end zone, and that'll be an automatic touchback. Ron, there's a case where the, the ball carrier touched the ball outside of the goal line but didn't have control of it. And again, as soon as the ball crosses the goal line, it's a dead ball. Painesville will take over now, first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Ron, we've mentioned in, in the field goal and the, and the two extra points that the um, they've done a great job getting the hold and the, and the kick, but the snaps have been right on the button. All three snaps from the center have just been right on the button. Very, very crucial when you're doing an extra point or a field goal. Starts there. And it's Lamazny back to pass and connects on the 34-yard line. Odell Parker on the reception. Brought down on the 41-yard line. And there is a flag. Flag back on the 19 on the far side of the field. Southview was about a half a second from sacking that quarterback. And he hung in there and got rid of the ball. And it's going to be against Painesville. The Harvey Red Raiders. I think that's an illegal substitution penalty, which they just keep shooting themselves in the foot. Even though that's only a five-yard penalty run, it ends up being about a 40-yard penalty. Yeah, the ball could have been out there on the 41-yard line. Instead, it is inside the 15. First and 15 for the Red Raiders. They'll try it again. Lamazny on the keeper, breaks away from two tacklers, finally brought down on the 20 yard line. Armando Rivera back in the lineup, making the tackle. Gain of six yards on the play, it's second down and nine. I see uh, Coach Hammond standing on the 30. That's as far as the coaching staff can go. He's the defensive coordinator, uh, head coach, and that helps when you have guys with that kind of experience helping you assist. Lamazny back to pass, and he is hit the moment he lets that ball go, and it did not reach the intended receiver on the far side of the field, the fullback, Eric Ridnauer. Incomplete pass, it's third down and nine. Josh Henderson making, no. making the blast on the quarterback. That's a couple times he's been there. He's the one that tipped the ball in the interception, so I think he and this quarterback are becoming uh, quite familiar with each other. I keep watching uh, Coach Shoulders go up and down the sidelines. 
I wonder if he runs sprints with his team because <laughs> I think he's got about four miles in already. Or he watches a lot of football games on TV. What a fantastic pass. Lamazny hitting his receiver, Sean Jackson, and the ball in Southview territory. That ball was thrown right down the center of the field, and that was a perfect strike. In stride. That was a nice, nice play for Painesville. 35 yard pass play, first and 10. The ball just over the 45. This might be the first time that Painesville's been uh, on the plus side of the field. Lamazny again and connects with his receiver, Ray McLean. Ray McLean gets the ball to the 32 yard line. And well, that was be about another a, first down. That was about a 12 or 15 yard pass. And there wasn't anybody with a blue shirt on within 12 or 15 yards of that receiver. How he got that wide open, but had that ball been thrown down a little better where he could have got it on the run, he still could be running. Well, this is not the time to be looking at that scoreboard and seeing 17 points while your opposition has nothing and relaxing. Southview's played some outstanding defense. They got to maintain and Oh, wow. Rittenauer just ran away from uh, one tackler. Finally brought down by Marquell Miller. That young man is low to the ground and it's going to be very difficult to tackle him. John Brown could have had him in the backfield for a loss on that play, but he managed to get away. 245 pound junior, Eric Ridenauer, five foot 10. It's another first down for the Red Raiders. The ball is on the Southview 18 yard line. And it's Lamazny looking to pass, keeping the ball though on the far side. He's to the 10, he's to the five, inside the five, still on his feet. He's in the end zone, touchdown. There was a case where the end did not keep his contain and, and let him get outside and he's got to hold him in the pocket, make him do something. Quarterback Tim Lamazny on an 18 yard run. That was a nice run run. The last five yards was all him. They had him stopped and he did a spin move and uh, fell forward into the end zone. Justin Portnick will do the holding. Chris Mann, the long snapper. And Frankie Spikes will attempt the extra point. Ball is in the air and it is good. So with 7.13 remaining in the first half, it's Southview 17, Painesville Harvey 7. Back with the kickoff right after this. Have you saved a life today? I took two flood victims to a shelter. I donated a day's pay to help a family that lost everything in a fire. Have you saved a life today? I teach a class in infant CPR. I donated a pint of blood. Have you saved a life today? No, but today somebody saved mine. The American Red Cross. Together, we can save a life. Frankie Spikes will be attempting the kickoff for the Red Raiders from his 40-yard line. Barry, you're more of a connoisseur of what's going on in the field than I. Do you kind of sense there were some new wrinkles in the Painesville offense, or was the Southview defense just kind of lax? It looked like it could have been a little combination of both. Maybe they looked a little lax because they were confused. It looked like when Painesville thought they were going to run the ball, they threw it, and when they thought they were going to throw it, they, they, they ran it to their fullback. So they had, they had Southview on their heels all the way down the field. Southview just did not line up and go after the football because they really wasn't sure what they were doing. Ronnie Soto on the kickoff return, taking the ball on his 15, bringing the ball out to the 31-yard line, where it's now first and 10 for the Southview Saints from their own 31. Ron, I see them throwing balls um, opposite sides. I wonder if they're using two different balls, which happens a lot in high school football. South uses one ball and, and uh, Painesville uses the other. Let's keep an eye on see if that's what they're doing. 
Nixon in motion. The pitch goes back to Terrence Beard. Beard looking for some running room, and he's going to be hit before he even comes close to the line of scrimmage. A loss of possibly two yards on the play. Sean Jackson making the tackle. It'll be second down, and they're spotting the ball. A good spot for the Saints. Just inside the 30, second down and 11. You know, Ron, we've talked in the past about players going two ways. It seems that Painesville has a number of uh, young men playing both ways. We've been announcing their names on both sides of the ball. Take a toll on them in the fourth quarter. This is where the conditioning will uh, have a major part. The give again to Terrence Beard right up the middle. Picks up a couple of yards on the play. And now it seems that, that Southview's gone a little conservative. They were throwing the ball over the field early, and, and now it looks like they're just going to try to maintain and get to the halftime and do some adjusting. But that's two straight runs, rather conservative. Beard picking up three yards on the play, the one yard previously lost, plus two more. It's now third down and eight. And the officials stopping the clock. Painesville calling a timeout with 5.45 remaining in the first half. 17 for Southview, 7 for Painesville. We'll be back in a moment. They won't leave you for someone younger. They won't notice you've gained weight. They won't fire you. They won't talk about you behind your back. All they'll ever do is love you. Find the love of your life. Visit PetBinder at ASPCA.org. Okay, if you notice on your screen, folks, that the uh, players are on the field over by the hash marks, uh, one of the rules in high school says that the teams can go to the sidelines and meet with their coach. Used to be the coach had to go all the way out. Now they bring the team over to them. So... An advantage for the coaching staff. My question would be, what would be the purpose of a timeout by the defense? Well, they, it's third down, Ron. They wanted to make sure they were in the right defense. This is a big play for them. If they can stop this and get the ball back, they got a chance to score before the half. Sean Nixon in motion, and it's Messer looking to pass. He's being chased, and he is brought down for a big loss in the backfield, making the tackle is Justin Hoffman for the Red Raiders. See, one of the things I've always been uh, a proponent of, Ron, is you can stop the ball offensively. You can stop the clock by passing the football. And that was a good timeout if, if they were doing that to set their defense up and make sure they were correct. They're going to get the ball back with five minutes left. That was a good call. Fourth down and 16 for the Southview Saints. A punting situation. Josh Fossey standing on his 12-yard line. Gets the good snap. He was rushed. Got the kick away. Taken back on the 38-yard line by Odell Parker. Parker hit on the 45. Making the tackle, Adam Figueroa. It'll be first and 10 for the Red Raiders from their own 45-yard line. Ron, if not for the, uh, the punting of... Uh Josh Fossey, uh, Southview would be in a little tougher predicament defensively. That's the last two punts that he's put out there uh, a good distance and good height with little return. He's, he's really helping them this evening. And we see now that the Red Raiders are on offense. The football was thrown back to the Southview bench, and the one from Painesville side of the field is now in play. So they are using different uh, footballs. Eric Rittenauer, John Brown again. Could have had him back on the 45-yard line. Boy, we have a lot of youngsters down on the uh, track area, Barry. They look well, like maybe a little cheerleading camp of some kind, Ron. They've got a lot of uh, cheerleaders. Yep. There's South a slew of them out there. Yeah, Southview St. Junior cheerleaders. Got to start getting them. It's like the football teams. You got to start getting them interested early. 
Gain of five on the last play, second down and five, and the pass right into the hands of Terrence Litton, and he is hit by Markwell Miller, but a first down for the Red Raiders as they continue now to move this football like they've been energized. Man, it's just it's like Southview has no idea what's going on. It's just they're really confused at the moment. First and 10 from the Southview 36-yard line. That and the quarterbacks, they're throwing the ball on the spot now. Ron, they're putting it right on the money. Lamassey almost intercepted. He was hit by uh, Southview's Josh Henderson, and his pass fell short, almost intercepted by Armando Rivera. I noticed one thing that Painesville's done, Ron, is they've gone to a double tight and double flankers, and they've got one running back, so it's a different offensive formation, which makes Southview play balanced now. When, when you're double tight like that, it's even front. You have to be even with them. Now they can go either side. Here they are again, double tight, double flanker. Second and 10. Lamasney back to pass over to the far side and almost, almost taken by the intended receiver, Sean Nixon, back there and was able to bat it away just in the nick of time. The intended receiver on that play, Ray McLean. Ron, we can go back to the uh, 80s with uh, the Redskins and uh, John Riggins. That was a John Riggins uh, formation. We did that a couple times when we had Raymond Harris at Admiral King. Got a 240-pound back, let him block for himself. And I think that's what Painesville's done. They, they've changed offensive formations, which has confused Southview. Maybe it's something they hadn't practiced or planned on. Well, the formations that uh, Painesville uses, the I formation, the split, the twins, and the spread. And it's the big fullback, Ridnour, and he is ridden out of bounds by Jeremy Coleman. Ron, when this uh, young man gets his hands on the ball, he's had a couple passes, couple runs, he always falls forward. He's never been moved sideways or backwards, so he's always going to get that extra yard or two. And the ball is on the 27-yard line. It's fourth down and one, and obviously uh, the Red Raiders will be going for it. Three minutes and 38 seconds uh, remaining here in the first half. And uh, Now they've gone to two backs, Ron. They're back to their uh, spread offense. Probably going to have a uh, straight dive. It's Ridnour breaks away from a couple of tacklers, still on his feet to the five, and finally knocked down, and he is just shy of the goal line. It'll be first and goal for the Red Raiders, and it'll be just another effort by the big fullback, and he should get in there the way he's been running. He ball. took, he took, uh, he broke three tackles and took two or three guys with him to the end. I thought he was in. They must have called his knee down. This is two different uh, two different teams we've seen from the first quarter Absolutely. to this one. It's the like best that Southview can open for is to run the clock out and regroup. It's like somebody pressed the button and we went into the twilight zone. Man, they've, they've kicked it up a notch. And it's a touchdown. This time the uh, ball carrier, uh, Frankie Spikes. There's another young man he's played... Uh, Great linebacker, he kicks off, he does the extra points, and now they put him in as the third back, and he carried the ball in for the score. <laughs> I'm watching him uh, change shoes as we're lining up. That's why they line up differently, because the kicker is uh, changing shoes. Chris Mann will snap the ball back. Justin Portnick, the holder, and Frankie Spikes will attempt the extra point which, if good, will bring the Red Raiders to within three points of the Southview Saints. What a quick come around. Snap is high, put down, ball in the air, and it is good. So with 3.01 remaining in the first half, the score is Southview 17, the Painesville Harvey Red Raiders 14. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this. Every time an adult gives up on our kids, Every time we surrender to the belief that their future is out of our hands, 
another child is left behind. I'm General Colin Powell, and I don't believe in giving up. That's why I'm asking you to join America's Promise. Log on to americaspromise.org or give us a call. Whoever you are, wherever you are, you can do something important. Pull your weight. Frankie Spikes will attempt the kickoff once again. Right down the middle, picked up on the 10 yard line by Terrence Beard, gets out to the 25. Kickoff return of about 15 yards. It'll be Southview's ball first and 10. Vince Danello making the tackle. Ron, we alluded to the uh, fact that Frankie Spikes was changing shoes and then we noticed that he kicked straight on. I bet he was going back to the old days of putting the square toe just shoe like on. Lou the toe. Just like Lou. Been a long, long time since I've seen a straight on kicker. Now, so many of the kickers nowadays, uh, professional, college, and high school are soccer style kickers. And get much more leg on the ball with that whip and the soccer style kick. Southview's lead now just three points. Once upon a time, they led 17-0, and we have a flag. And it's going to be against the Southview Saints. And the call is illegal procedure. That'll put the ball back to the 20-yard line where it's now going to be first down and 15. I think Coach Shoulders is going to have to do some real talking. In fact, he'd like to do some talking right now as he's indicated I want a timeout. So he's called a timeout and uh, we're just going to keep it here with uh, 2.52 remaining in the first half. Southview leading only by 3.17 to 14. And uh, we, we see the uh, coach talking to the players and we have the little gals down below and we're going to be showing you those too and with this uh, opportunity I just want to say again our appreciation to uh, Topps Supermarket at the center of Sheffield for supplying so much of the refreshments here for the media and for the visiting coaches also Scorchers at 9th and Broadway in downtown Lorraine where by the way we had dinner the other evening when we went to see the Willie Nelson concert this past Wednesday, October 17th. I think the uh, scouts from Euclid would uh, like to have the addresses of the people that have provided the food. They want to send them a thank you card. They said that they've had quite a time here this evening. Well, it's Scorchers, 9th and Broadway, the chicken wings from uh, Scorchers, and uh, the rest of and the paraphernalia, mm -hmm. Marco's Pizza, and uh, you could thank any Marco's Pizza place, I would imagine, <laughs> and Top Supermarket. So there you are. Messer to pass and connects on the reception for the Southview Saints, Adam Figueroa. That's kind of surprising there that they would come out throwing the ball. I would think that they'd want to get the ball down and um, run the clock out and get, the, get a first down or two and then uh, do some changing at halftime. The ball is on the 32-yard line, where it's now second down and three. Saints need to get to the 35 for the first down. John Brown in motion, Messer to pass. Markwell Miller's got the first down. He's to the 40 and hit right at the 40. It'll be first and 10 for the Southview Saints from their own 40-yard line. Covering on the play, making the stop for the Red Raiders, Aaron Humphreys. Kind of interesting to note when we stopped at uh, Scorchers for dinner Wednesday evening, uh, they don't have uh, people coming to the table to help you out. You go on and place your order, and I'll continue this in a moment. Sean Nixon in motion. Messer back to pass again, looking over to the far side, lets the ball go. Sean Nixon, and he's got it! Oh my goodness, he's got it! And his defender was almost twice as twice the size, yeah, covering was, on the play, Sean Jackson. I was looking to see what uh, his height was, but they're not listed there. But Again, I'm very surprised that uh, once he got the first down, I thought that Southview would have just run the ball and, and got the clock down. And now they're in territory where they can uh, use their two timeouts and um, maybe get a score. From the 33-yard line, 
in Red Raider territory, first and 10, with a minute and 40 seconds remaining. Messer back to pass again, coming to the near side, and hits Figueroa. The ball is on the 23-yard line, close to another first down as they stop the clock. And, and they're indicating first and 10 for the Southview Saints on the Painesville Harvey 23. I noticed uh, Josh uh, Fossey's uncle, uh, Roger Fire, we alluded to him a week or so ago, sitting down here saying, give him another chance. Get it to where we can kick a field goal. That would be nice, but a touchdown would be even better. Nixon in motion. Messer back to pass, being chased, and lets the ball go incomplete. It'll be second and ten. We were saying when we uh, got to Scorchers, uh, Patty, who uh, took our order, uh, indicated uh, much appreciation. And we give that appreciation to our producer and director, Joe Bach, because uh, they watched the football game on Friday nights as soon as he manages to get it on at Scorchers, 9th and Broadway in downtown Lorraine. Also found out that they watched the uh, game at the VFW Post on Oberlin Avenue as soon as it comes on TV 20. So our credit to Joe Bach for getting that on as quickly as possible. And I think the Knights of uh, Columbus on Oberlin Avenue does it also. Terrence Beard hit right at the line at 20, uh, the 25-yard line. In fact, a loss of about two yards on the play. It'll be third down and 12. The ball's pretty close to being in the middle of the field. Uh, this is a case where you throw a quick pass for a score. If you don't get it, then you then still got the field goal. Then you bring in the foot of Josh Fossey. You don't want to. You don't want to sack here, so you don't want a long, a delayed pass. You want to make it quick. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, give our kicker a chance. If the ball's on the 25, it'd be about a 42, 42-yarder. 42 Probably within his range. Certainly in any wind going to cause any trouble. Right, no wind at this moment. The American flag on the uh, giant flagpole at the north end of the football field is... Uh, just hanging. Quite a difference from Tuesday night. I was talking to Kenny Clark, and he said that the the winds, the game, they had a soccer game here Tuesday night, girls' soccer game, and those hurricane winds, and he said that almost ripped the flag off the pole. Big play now for the Southview Saints. Hopefully they'll be able to get the first down or at least sufficient yardage to make Josh Falsey's field goal attempt uh, a lot easier. Messer back to pass. Let's it go into the end zone and in and out of the hands of Sean Nixon, but I think he was out of bounds when he uh, was able to grab the ball, just couldn't hang on. Ron, well, we got a second. I, I, I Again, each week we talk about the job that the Kenny Clark and the crew does over here, but you have to understand they played a football game here Friday night. They had a soccer game Monday night, a soccer game in the torrential rains on Tuesday. They had a doubleheader football game on Wednesday, a middle school doubleheader, and now another game on Friday night, and this field looks like it's in great shape. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, they, they must be out of, uh, they must think they're out of Fossey's uh, range because they've lined up to play. And equipment adjustment uh, being called for here on the part of uh, Terrence Beard as he comes to the sideline. And he'll be replaced at this time by Freddie Jimenez, now in the lineup. That's a big, that's a big uh, change right there because uh, that young man's been real helpful in their offense, and it's a shame he has to come out for this play. Messer back to pass on the fourth down, and he is hit, and the ball gets away. So it's an incomplete. And I yeah. must say, Ron, that the uh, young man that went in for him, Jimenez, did a great job uh, blocking his man to the front side. It was uh, Messer was hit from the back side. So the Red Raiders hold with 49 seconds remaining in the first half. They'll take over possession of the ball from their own 25 yard line, first and 10. Dave White, the center over the ball. The quarterback remains Tim Lamazny. And the give is to the fullback, Eric Ridnour. Ridnour rides the Southview tacklers 
to about the 35 yard line. Tackle made by Armando Rivera. And the Red Raiders are calling a timeout. A reminder that uh, we're ha we'll have the uh, Southview Saints Marching Band uh, halftime show, and it will be brought to you by the Palace Civic Center, 6th and Broadway in downtown Lorraine. And this past Wednesday, uh, October 17th, was another big milestone for the Palace Civic Center when they hosted the Willie Nelson concert and John Handyside, the director of the Palace Civic Center, announced to the crowd that this was the first sellout of an event at the Palace Civic Center in 20 years. The very first one 20 years ago was when the Cleveland Orchestra came to Lorraine and uh, performed uh, at the Palace. So congratulations to John Handyside and all the fine folks who make that uh, outstanding historic uh, monument what it is today. Well, I know two people that were there. Joe Bach. And Ron Bacalar. And my wife, And Marilyn, Marilyn Bacalar. So I know three people that and, went. And, and the couple that we went with. He was late, but he got a seat in the front, front row. row. He was up there with Bob Euchre. Bob Euchre in the front row. Yes, indeed. Well, Tim Alcorn will need to know that because... Lamazny pass and connects the receiver, Ray McLean, still on his feet to the 20, finally knocked down on the 19-yard line. With 29 seconds remaining, Marquell Miller made the touchdown saving stop, first and 10 for the Red Raiders. And again, the Red Raiders call a timeout. They want to discuss what they're going to do with 29 seconds. They've got plenty of time. This is their la was their last timeout, Ron, because they used the one earlier on that defensive. Yes, they did, and they uh, second offensive timeout in this series. So they are now out of timeouts. You just wonder why they, they called a timeout there, Ron. They, the chains weren't anywhere near being set up. Now here's a situation with a timeout and uh, the teams are staying basically uh, where the ball is located instead of coming to the sidelines. I think that's usually the, the uh, determination of the coach. So there is the option. They don't have to come to the sidelines if they choose not. See, I'll say it's a defensive coach because he wants to be out there and feel the sense of what's going on. Offensive coaches want to bring them to the sidelines. Rocky so Hammond. Rocky Hammond went out there and met with his young men at the point of battle to hopefully inspire them where Tony wanted to bring his young men to the sidelines to calm them down and get them ready to play well it's the defense that needs to get ready to play right now Lamazny with the ball looking to pass he's hanging on and he is tackled back on the 20 yard line that should about do it Ron they, unless they can line up and throw the ball down they are out of timeouts, 15 seconds. Clock continues to run. We're down to 10 seconds. And Lamazny just simply uh, spikes the ball to the ground to stop the clock with 9.7 remaining and a third and 10 situation. And this will be a case where uh, the Southview defense is going to have to play heads up ball if they want to go into that locker room and maintain their three point lead, 17 think, to 14. I think I'd put three guys on the goal line. Southview was first to score with 552 remaining in the first quarter on a 35 yard field goal by Josh Fossey. Lamazny looking to pass. He's got the ball. He's got the ball. Still looking, still looking. Finally lets it go, and it's incomplete. And there's 2.1 seconds remaining. It'll be fourth and 10. Southview then added their first touchdown at 4-11 of the first quarter on a 40-yard run by Terrence Beard. Josh Fossey's point after was good. Southview led 10-0. Coming into the second quarter with 9.27 remaining, another big TD run by Terrence Beard, this time 25 yards. Fossey's point after good. Southview led 17 to nothing. From that point, it's been all the Red Raiders. At 713, an 18-yard run by Tim Lamazny, the quarterback. Frankie Spikes point after good. 
That made it 17-7, and then a one-yard run by Frankie Spikes and his point after good, and that's our score at the moment, 17-14. Lamazny passes in the flats, and right down to the ground goes Spikes, and that's the end of the first half. So the Southview Saints go into the locker room with that three-point advantage, 17-14. And we invite you to stay tuned for the halftime show featuring the Southview High School Marching Band brought to you by the Palace Civic Center, 6th and Broadway in downtown Lorraine. If you're watching us on Saturday, October 20th or Sunday, October 21st, the movie being played at the Palace Civic Center is Tomb Raider, rated PG-13, showtime 7 p.m. both nights. Admission is just $1.50, and it's being shown on the area's largest screen with the best sound system. Some of the other big events taking place on Thursday, October 25th, the Philippine National Dance Group will be performing. That's Thursday, October 25th at 7.30 p.m. Tickets are just $12. And on Sunday, October 28th, it's the Fireland Symphony Orchestra. They'll be performing at 3 p.m. Tickets are $16 for adults, seniors 15, students under 18 just $5. That's Sunday, October 28th at 3 p.m. Now sit back and enjoy the Southview Saints marching band and we'll be back with second half action shortly.
certainly hope you enjoyed the Lorraine Southview High School marching band performance here at the halftime at George Daniels Stadium. All brought to you by the Palace Civic Center, 6th and Broadway in downtown Lorraine. And some of the events we want to talk about. On Sunday, October 28th, it's going to be Founders Path presenting How Is That Funny? It's a 7 p.m. performance and tickets are just $15. Then looking ahead to the 1st of November, that's on a Thursday, it's going to be the Saints concert performed by Tom Franzak. It's going to have a performance at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. And it's all going to go for the honor of Helen Steiner Rice. The friends of Helen Steiner Rice are putting on this all day or all Saints concert and uh, the profits will go to help to build a memorial to this outstanding poet who was born and reared in the city of Lorraine. Tickets are $10 at the door, $12 uh, in advance, $12 at the door, and groups of 30 or more, $6 plus a 50 cent handling fee per ticket. You can contact the Palace Civic Center for further information and or to purchase tickets for any of these great events. Give them a call at 245-2323. That's 245-2323. Nearly three quarters of a million remarkable individuals serving their country. And they all believe they have the best job in the world. Join us. America's Air Force. No one comes close. Second half action ready to get underway here at George Daniel Stadium. The Southview Saints this time will receive the kickoff and defend the north goal. Frankie Spikes for the Red Raiders kicking off from his 40. Painesville Harvey will defend the south goal. Southview Saints, if you're just joining us with a three-point lead, 17 to 14 after once upon a time leading 17 to nothing. Ball taken on the 27-yard line by Marquell Miller. Marquell Miller across the 40. It'll be first and 10 for the Southview Saints from their own 41-yard line. I'm sure as uh, soon as Marquell gets off the field, uh, Tony Shoulder is going to have a talk to him about putting that ball a little safer position. That ball was out there waving around, and the last thing you need is a turnover on the second half kickoff. Well, we trust that uh, Coach Tony Shoulders had his fair share of uh, pep talk in the locker room, and we'll see what's going to happen here in the opening moments of this third quarter. And the give is to Terrence Beard. Beard to the 50, still on his feet, and finally pushed out of bounds at about the 44-yard line by Sean Jackson. Enough for a first down for the Southview Saints. It'll be first and 10. They're now in Red Raider territory. That's that trap again, Ron. They come to the right, and Terrence takes off to the left and cuts it back to the right. That's uh, been a big play for them. On the first and 10 for the Southview Saints, Jason Messer, the quarterback, looks over his line, barks the signals in motion is John Brown. Messer back to pass and hits to Marquell Miller and a flag at the 35-yard line. If Good. it's spotted on the 35, it'll be just shy of a first down, but we'll wait and see. Well, what they the could take the interference penalty. That'd give them 15 yards and guarantee that an automatic first down. Pass interference on Painesville. Young man had his left arm wrapped around Marquell when he came around trying to knock the ball down. So they'll probably take the 15 yards. Well, it'll give them five more yards than what they got on the pass play. And, that and an automatic sense. first and down. And an automatic first down. So uh, at this point in time, I would say it's a no-brainer. I would think so. But they do have to discuss the situation and they'll bring the ball back to the original line of scrimmage and then mark off 15 yards. So they'll go from the 45 to the 30 yard line and it'll be first and 10 for the Southview Saints. Ron, I gotta believe that this is just what uh, the doctor ordered here coming out. 
Tony Shoulders, I'm sure, said we need to get a good drive here, get the ball down. At least now we're in four down territory and we're playing on their side of the field. So putting the pressure on the defense early. Adam Figueroa split wide to the right. Sean Nixon in motion, Messer back to pass, and he's going to be thrown for a loss. A host of Red Raider tacklers pouring in through the offensive line to make the stop. That brings the ball back to the 37-yard line. Sean Jackson leading the charge for the Red Raiders. A loss of uh, seven yards on the play. It's second down and 17. That really puts your offense at a disadvantage. Southview's, uh, you got to give them credit. They're they're doing anything they can on every on any side of the spot of the field, but that might have been a place where you want to run the ball a little bit and see if you can get another first down. Now they're going to be almost forced to throw it. Markwell Miller split wide to the left. Jeremy Coleman to the near side. Messer to pass over to the uh, sideline and almost intercepted again. The Red Raiders had their hands on the ball and just couldn't hang on and the interception almost made by Odell Parker. I think that's the case, Ron, where he was running before he had the ball. He was turned upfield and heading north and didn't have his hands on the ball. It's third and 17 on the incomplete pass. Another big down for the Southview Saints as they open this second half, looking like they were all charged up, raring to go to put more points on the board, but something has happened to kind of stymie that. Well, we'll see what happens on this one. Messer hands off to Terrence Beard, and Beard is going nowhere. It'll be fourth down, making the tackle Aaron Humphreys for the Red Raiders. If you think if we took a poll, how many people do you think we would have that didn't know that trap was coming on that play? I didn't know it was coming. Did you know it was coming? I would have bet the ranch that trap was coming. They, they sacked him the last two times. They weren't going to do it again. Josh Fossey standing on the mid-stripe, waiting for the snap from center. Low snap, hits the ground, picks it up, and puts the foot. But it's a high, short punt. It lands on the 34, but takes a Southview St. bounce. What a break for Josh Fossey. You know, maybe, Ron, that's the first time that he wasn't under any pressure. Maybe they need to, uh, Painesville, they need to let him through so they can get to him so he can kick the ball 45, <laughs> 50 yards. He had a lot of time on that ball. I, I think when he, the snap was bad, he thought he really had to rush it. No doubt. And again, we see the ball come flying across, so I think our uh, speculation was correct in the fact they're using two different balls. From the 23-yard line, it's first and 10 for the Red Raiders on their own 23, and the give is to the big fullback. It is Eric Ridnauer on the far side of the field, brought down by... Steven Rivera. Well, Ron, that's the only way they're going to be able to tackle that young man is you got to get lower than he gets. And that's what Steven Rivera did that time. Other times they've tried to take him on high. He's just run over people and taken them with him. You, you've got to get lower than he gets. Gain of three yards on the play. It's second down and seven. From the 27-yard line. And again, the give to the big fullback, Ridnauer. Gets across the 30-yard line to about the 31. It'll be third down. Eric Jimenez making the tackle. Third and two for the Red Raiders. Do you give it back to the big fullback who is now on the ground tying a shoe shoestring on his uh, left foot? The referee will give him as much time as he needs, and then when he's ready, you'll see him spot the ball. I see our athletic director making his way back up the steps. Uh, again, like to thank him for his hospitality and his fine efforts of trying to make this a first-class operation. And he is succeeding. I will say that. The give is to Rittenauer, and it's going to be close, depending on where they spot that football. I was talking to the Euclid coaches, and they said they've only been into one other school this year that's provided them with food. So they'll... They'll have some good things to say about the uh, Lorraine Admiral King Athletic Director. 
Gain of two yards on the play. It's fourth down and one for the Red Raiders. What do you do in a situation like this? Take the chance and go for it or punt, and it looks like they're going to go for it on a fourth and one. I meant to say Lorraine City Schools athletic director. <clears throat> and the give to the left side of the line. Again, it's going to be close. The Saints are indicating that they made the stop. Now, Ron, they're going to call the chains out and make a measurement on this one. There's a call I did not understand. If you didn't make it third and one, why jeopardize your team and go fourth and one and give Southview the ball on the 35-yard line? Why not punt it away? It's only a three-point game. And plenty of time. And a lot of time. Out come the chains. It looks to be short. What is our director saying? It's short. Joe Bach says it is short. And he has been right so many times. And the Southview Saints, you can see them jumping up and down. They stopped the Red Raiders on a fourth and one. Well, that's a big call right there. That's a big stand by Southview. Third and one after having the ball in great field position and then having to punt and then turn around and hold them on four downs. Again, I don't understand that call, but that's why they're over there and we're up here. And we'll see what the Southview Saints managed to do with the kind of defensive effort uh, the players performed on that field. Will the offense now take advantage and put the points on the board? Again, you may see them go for it right now. Painesville might be down a little bit, thinking they should have had that. Sean Nixon in motion coming to the near side. Messer passes up the middle. And the intended receiver, John Brown, couldn't grab a hold on the incomplete pass. It's second down and 10. Seven. Now, Ron, when you throw the ball in first and 10, you almost got to throw it the next two downs now. Look to maybe bring Messer uh, wide, have him roll to the right, put a little pressure on the defense. I'm surprised they haven't had him carry the ball. Just tuck it and go. 7.25 remaining in the third quarter. 17-14, Southview leading by three. Here comes Sean Nixon. The give is to Terrence Beard. Beard's got the first down and hit around the 20-yard line. Saving tackle made by Jarney Farron. Jamie Farron. There's that trap play again, Ron. It's the only running play that's been successful for the Saints, and they just keep going back to it. i got to believe that the Painesville coaching staff was telling them, look for the trap, look for the trap. And Terrence broke it and got Southview the first down. First and 10 from the Red Raiders' 21-yard line. Messer looking to pass, holds the ball and gets up close to the 15-yard line. Ron, uh, Messer just got a heck of a block from Terrence Beard. They put on an all-out blitz, and uh, Terrence picked up that outside linebacker and stepped up and took him face-to-face -face and allowed Messer to turn the corner and gain five yards, six yards. So The ball is on the 15, as you indicated, Barry, a gain of six yards on the play, second down and four for the Southview Saints as they begin to knock on that goal line door. John Brown in motion. Messer trying to pass and he is hit from the blind side and making that tackle in the backfield. Sean Jackson came in untouched. What they did, Ron, was the Southview released their receiver on that, the wing back on that side and left no one there to block him and he came in from the backside untouched. And, and you know, uh, Jason Messer was never a quarterback to uh, begin with. He was put into action after uh, Ricky Thomas got his uh, broken collarbone and uh, Mark Majoris, the first string quarterback, uh, was out for the season with a broken collarbone. And who would be left? Uh, Coach Shoulders may. Uh, <laughs> Messer fake the pass. He's holding on. He's running with the ball and gets up close to the 10-yard line. Again, depending on where they spot that ball, 
will determine if he was able to pick up the first down. Oh, I think I know who would quarterback him. Uh, Coach Lukasek. Mark Lukasek is an all long time high school college quarterback. I think uh, Air Lukasek used to have the nickname when he was at Admiral King would probably be able to go out there and fill the shoes. The only problem is when I saw him on the field a couple of weeks back, he started to get some gray hairs. And I don't know if he'd be able to pass as a high school quarterback. Anyway, they're bringing the chains out to uh, take a measurement. Ron, there's a case and where Joe Bach says it should be a first down. We'll see if he's right again. There's a case, Ron, where they just mess her, as I said earlier, just have him tuck the ball and go. First down. The man is two for two. He does have the zoom lens, though. I mean, he can get yes, down there. Does. And I keep threatening to bring my binoculars, and I always get a senior moment and forget. <laughs> But he does share the information with us. He yes, doesn't he hold does. it in abeyance. He does Bless uh, his heart. Does put it out there for us so we can give the viewers a, a heads up that we're going to be going that way. It's a big drive for the Saints. Not only are they moving the ball and getting it into at least field goal position, the, the clock is running too, and that's always on your side when you're ahead. They've got a first and ten. They, should be, they will be able to get first and goal run. It's about the one foot. Messer looking to pass into the end zone, and it's a touchdown. John Brown, 11-yard touchdown pass from Jason Messer to John Brown at 449 of the third quarter. You know, Ron, I was about to say a couple plays ago, one way to slow down that rush from the backside is to throw the ball where he vacates, and that's exactly what they did. They released John Brown into that area, and he went one-on-one -on -one with the defensive back, and we do have an injured player for the Red Raiders. That's a great throw. Jason Messer rolling to the left, stop, squares up, throws the ball back. From my uh, disadvantage point, does it look like it's 15 on the ground there? Well, there is no 15, so. Oh, number 10, number 10, Chris Mann. Okay, Chris Mann, the injured uh, player. There is a 15, and 15 is the quarterback, Tim Lamazny, even though he's not on the roster. <laughs> so it just shows that it's not, all, not just our coaching right, right. staff that... Uh, this has not been a good year for rosters, <laughs> for whatever reason. Hey, we had the same thing Wednesday. In fact, we had a, we, the fullback kept carrying the football for Lorraine Middle. We couldn't announce his name. No name, no number. No, we had a number because it's seen on the back no of his name. jersey, but no name. Luckily, one of the um, middle school teachers was sitting down here in front, and I sent him on a mission as, as Ray Ebersole went last week with number 63 for Admiral King. <laughs> Jason Messer will get the snap from center. He'll do the holding, and Josh Fossey will attempt the point after. Good snap, ball down, kicked in the air, and it is good. So again, with 4.49 remaining in the third quarter, the Southview Saints taking a 10-point advantage. It's 24-14. We'll be back with the kickoff right after this. Time out. Your one-stop place for something really special is Impressions, corner of Oberlin Avenue and Tower Boulevard. T-shirts and sweatshirts personally designed to your specific needs. Anything from bears, trains to zebras, and specially designed hats as well. And don't forget Impressions, your one-stop spot for school jackets. See Dave, the designer expert at Impressions, Oberlin Avenue at Tower Boulevard, right here in Lorraine. Josh Fossey kicking off from his 40. A good high kick picked up on about the 12-yard line. Coming up the field with the ball for the Red Raiders, Ray McLean. And finally knocked out of bounds. By the kicker. By the kicker, Josh Fossey. Uh, Ron, we have, a, we have one good sign. One of two things has happened. The Euclid coaching staff just left. So either we ran out of food <laughs> or they believe that Southview is going to be victorious because they're gone. Ball is on the 46-yard line. Good kickoff return by the Red Raiders. Good field position, first and 10. 
Lamazny back to pass, coming to the near side and hit immediately after catching the ball was Sean Jackson and making the hit John Brown. That's the young man that just made the touchdown reception. No gain on the play, it's second down and 10. And he's one of those uh, talented sophomores that'll be back underclassmen. Uh, Messer's a junior. Um, I think Sean Nixon's a junior. You know, one of the amazing things, again, talking to Tony Shoulders last night when I called to check on the starting lineups, he said, we've reached the point, Ron, where we've got the personnel out there who really want to play football. It's a shame that it's taken him nine weeks to, to get to that point. Now, now you're almost hoping you could play three or four more games. And the good thing is uh, that so many of them, as we pointed out, underclassmen, and there's a great hit right there by Eric Jimenez, a junior, for a big loss. Now, Rocky Hammond says if they can do it to our quarterback, we can do it to theirs. Just Why not? Blitz the backside and uh, untouched. And What's good for the Saint is good for the Raider. I guess, because he was untouched and the quarterback had nowhere to run. Now, this puts you in a real tough spot. You're third and 15. Back on the 39-yard line. You don't want it picked off. In fact, it's uh, third and 17. And I believe that fourth and one is going to come back to haunt them. Lamazny back to pass again up the middle and intercepted by Marquell Miller. Marquell to the 40, to the 30, to the 25, the 20, and finally brought down inside the 15-yard line. Ron, he was just waiting back there like uh, waiting to take a candy from a baby. He was just sitting back there waiting. The ball floated up there. It looked like it was wide open. He stepped right in front, and except for the uh, fullback, he would have had six. That's a big turnover. Markwell Miller listed with uh, so many in the Golden Crescent area with a uh, uh, number of interceptions coming into this ball game tonight. Had a total of three interceptions, this being the first one for him in this game. Now he's got four. We do have a penalty. Unsportsmanlike conduct. This will be the case where... Two years ago, it would have been first and 25. They're going to bring the chains back. It's going to be first and 10. From For the, the reason you indicated, so that the offense is not penalized. Right. Well, you know, my point is maybe they should be because they're the one who got the penalty. I, I, being a defensive coach, I really think this puts the defense at a disadvantage. First and 10 for the Southview Saints. They still have good field position. Could have been better. See what they do with it. Messer back to pass, has the time, and on his knees accepting that pass is Adam Figueroa. He got up to run, but it would not have uh, been no. to his advantage. It's he not like the pros the were right. you, hey, you do not have to be touched in high school. When you're down, you're down. And the same with college, if I'm not mistaken. And that's why, and then that prevents injuries. You don't want guys getting uh, helmets driven into them and... Uh, Second down and about a yard here for the Southview Saints. Messer looking to pass again. Marquell Miller, what a fine catch as he leaped in the air to grab it. And a first down for the Southview Saints. The ball on about the 12-yard line, first and 10. And he's going to be a little shaken up there. He might have probably knocked the wind out of him. Well, the... Big lanky sophomore is going to come off momentarily. Catch his breath, he seems to be walking okay. The problem is, Ron, once they blow the whistle and they bring in, they wave the uh, trainers out or the coach, then he has to leave or they have to call timeout. So it's automatic he's gonna leave the game for at least one play. And it's first and 10 again. From the 13 yard line, Maybe Painesville Harvey doesn't like odd number quarters. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens in the fourth <laughs> quarter. Hopefully the Saints will be able to get a big enough lead and almost intercepted. 
The ball was, uh, the intended receiver was Adam Figueroa. That ball was thrown closer to Painesville than it was to the uh, Saints. That's the third one. That's, yeah, I was That's just going to say the third time. time that they've had an opportunity, a golden opportunity, to make an interception and just could not hang on. And you really need to do that to get the ball back to your offense. You need to come up with a big play, and they've had three chances to, to thwart the uh, Saints' drives, and each time they've uh, let the ball go right through their hands. That ball was very easily catchable. Second down and 10 for the Southview Saints. And uh, for whatever reason, unless it was delay of game, no, I think there's going to no be a flag. I think there's going to be a penalty. Uh, there's trouble with the clock. I. Well, Lorraine City Schools athletic director Ray Ebersol has been uh, pointing to the clock that uh, they're going to add some time to it, so he's going to come over and tell them what to put on the clock. Well, while they're trying to figure out how much time to add to the clock, which they've just done, a minute and 15 seconds remaining in the third quarter, I just would like to point out quickly that the uh, WHHS television truck from Painesville Harvey High School, uh, we discovered during the halftime show that uh, that was a donation. Not a single penny of taxpayers' money was spent uh, to purchase that uh, vehicle. It was donated. And if there's any corporate uh, people out there that have a nice truck available, I know our producer director, Joe Bach, would be more than happy to sit down and talk to you. Terrence Beard into the end zone. Touchdown from the 13-yard line. Again, the trap play working. Terrence Beard with 108 remaining. Well, that play has not been stopped yet. It's just been, he went untouched from about the 12. He. Jason Messer will do the holding. Josh Fossey attempting the point after. Again, another excellent snap from center. The ball is in the air, and it is good. And with 108 remaining in the third quarter, it's Southview 31, Painesville Harvey 14. Back with the kickoff right after this. Excuse me. Excuse me, are you Santa Claus? I heard you might be him. If you are him, here's my list. Help the Marines make Christmas possible for less fortunate children. Donate a new toy to Toys for Tots. Josh Fossey with a short kick, landing on the 30-yard line. And look at that! Do you believe that? Well, there's a case where the young man didn't think it was a live ball. He thought it was a kickoff. It's Markwell a Miller got his second win back and recovered that kickoff. It is a free, oh my goodness. I think Tony Shoulders <laughs> is trying to drive a nail in the coffin. I, you know, Fossey's kicked the ball deep almost every time inside the 15, and that time he just soccered it up. He just pooched it up in the air, and Marquell Miller just <laughs> He could have bent down and picked the ball up and gone with it, Ron. It <laughs> I see some Southview Saint coaches on the sideline with big smiles on their face. Wow, how did we get away with that I one? bet you got at least six of them down there that said they tried to talk Tony into calling that. <laughs> On a first and ten for the Saints, Ooh. Messer fakes the, well, he did give the handoff. And I and think Painesville's got it back. And Painesville did, in fact, get it back. The give was to uh, Terrence Beard, and it's Aaron Humphreys who came up with the loose ball. So what was a spectacular uh, kickoff recovery by the Southview Saints? Just kind of backfired on them as they gave up the ball on the first play from scrimmage. It'll be first and 10 for the Red Raiders on their own 30-yard line. On the carry for the Red Raiders, Sean Jackson brings the ball out to the 39-yard line. A pickup of nine yards on the play. It's second down and one. 
Ron, I see one of the other assistants for Southview is uh, Terry Callahan, and a couple weeks ago there was a very nice article in the paper about his son Patrick, who lost his leg to cancer and is quite an athlete, golfer, skier, on one leg. Sean Jackson again, the ball carrier, first down for the Red Raiders as he gets up close to the midstripe. Ball will be spotted on about the 49-yard line, first and 10. Speaking of articles, uh, I really enjoyed the article by Teresa Newhoff in the morning journal, The Edge, that comes out in every Friday's paper about uh, the young lady that is playing football for the Southview Saints, namely Alicia Reyes. She is number 10. And uh, I don't, yes, there she is over at the 30-yard uh, line. We'll have a little more to say in a moment. Here comes their version of the call, the fake. Lamazny looking to pass, being chased, gets the ball away, it's intercepted. Marquell Miller with his second reception of the night, his fifth so far this season. Marquell Miller, and he's able to bounce up from that interception. No problem there. <laughs> that's, that's about five great plays he's made. This half, he's caught a couple, he's intercepted two, he, he got the kickoff. What a game. End of the third quarter. So what a way to end the quarter. Yes, it is the end of the third quarter with our score, Southview 31, Painesville Harvey 14. We'll be back with the start of the fourth and final quarter right after this. As time flows on, there are places we return to again and again. Precious places. Timeless places. Places that with your help can endure forever. I'm Paul Newman. Help the Nature Conservancy save the last great places around the world. Here's that uh, TV 30 truck from Painesville Harvey High School, and uh, we're trying to decide whether that's an old bread truck or an old potato chip truck. Uh, it does have an air conditioning unit, as you can see, and also a heating unit, so uh, the operators inside are kept cool in the hot weather and warm in the cold weather. And I know we have uh, some real fine potato chip companies right here in Lorraine. <laughs> Smitty's Potato Chips, Lay's Potato Chips. DeSantis. Uh, uh, Wonder Bread, etc., uh, etc. Et so hopefully uh, Joe Bach can get himself a nice truck donated by some corporation, and it's all tax deductible. Then we got to start working on the equipment. The pitch goes to Sean Nixon. Nixon turns the corner and gets up to about the 45-yard line. And uh, Ray Ebersol assures us that the uh, there'll be a company here this weekend to, to look at the lights. They Even the manufacturer does not understand what happened to it. He said they got to go about 90 feet in the air to get it looked at, though. So hopefully we'll get that corrected by next week. Because Lorraine uh, City Schools has a good chance to uh, host several playoff games, and we hope that things are taken care of by then. Well, with the kind of influence he has, I'm sure it will. Gain of four yards on the play. It's second down and six for the Saints. And the give is right up the middle to Terrence Beard. Beard breaks across the 45, not much more. We could see uh, Oscar Hill shitting up that pole someday, uh, trying to get those lights fixed under Ray's influence and uh, pressure. Anything is possible, anything. Ray puts his mind to something, it happens. And that's something that's never been done around here before. Gain of a yard on the play, it's third down and five for the Southview Saints. This will be a big play. Marquell Miller split wide to the left here on the near side. Sean Nixon in motion. Messer back to pass, has protection, has time. Marquell Miller could not hang on. Had his hands on the ball, covering on the play for the Red Raiders, Odell Parker. Ron, that's going to be a combination that's going to be uh, people are going to have to reckon with next year, this Messer to uh, Miller. Well, you have a situation of Mark Majoris coming back as a junior. 
Ricky Thomas is a sophomore, and Jason Messer has really uh, shown his colors the past couple of weeks, passing for over 200 yards in a losing cause against Shaker Heights, and I'm impressed with what I've seen so far tonight. So Tony Scholders has a very enviable situation. A lot of good talent. Great punt by Josh Fossey and fumbled but recovered by Odell Parker. He took the punt back on his 15-yard line, couldn't hang on, dropped it but recovered on the 14. As I mentioned earlier, Ron, a uh, little pressure on him and he uh, gets the ball off uh, quite far. First and 10 for the Red Raiders from their own 14-yard line with 10 minutes, 14 seconds remaining in the ball game. If you're Tony Shoulders looking at that clock, you think it's going to be about a two hours before we get to the end of that 10 minutes. This would be a big win for Tony. Uh, early on in the week, he received a reported story that uh, the Painesville paper said that they were playing an undisciplined inner city school and it should be a victory for Painesville Harvey. I'm sure that was tacked on the locker room door somewhere this week. Well, I do not see an undisciplined team at this moment. The problems with the discipline have been taken care of, and as we've said so often, we give Coach uh, Tony Shoulders all the credit in the world. It's a team effort, not an individual effort, and those that could not abide by the rules and the regulations are no longer with the team. And what we have left are young men who want to play football. And we do have a Southview Saint injured on the field. I do believe it is Ron Soto, number 22. Right, they called immediately to bring him in, and I noticed that the, the the trainer has him not moving. He was moving his legs around and kicking, and now they're going to roll him over. All right, so that's definitely a good sign that they were able to do that. The last time we saw something like that, it was Tony Rodriguez on that football field here at George Daniel Stadium with just a minute and a few seconds remaining. And, and you know, it was kind of interesting to note when uh, they had the toss of the coin before the start of this football uh, game, the four captains for Southview came out onto the field. They were number 22, Ron Soto, number 64, Ryan Humphreys, number 72, Ferris Stevens, and number 68, out of uniform, but with his jersey on, Tony Rodriguez. That's a class move uh, Absolutely. by uh, Tony Absolutely. Shoulders and his staff to do that. Uh, the young man's a football player and uh, he has a severe injury and Tony's still going to recognize him as a, as a part of the team and maybe that's how he can contribute. And you know, there's no doubt in my mind, I bet he's out there for every practice, even though he can't practice. As he told us in our interview uh, a few weeks back, his football career is done. It is finished, as well as wrestling. And he was an outstanding wrestler for the Southview Saints wrestling uh, squad. But I, I just have to believe he was out there for every practice, just encouraging his teammates. And they're helping Ron Soto off the field at this point in time. He can't put any pressure on that left leg, so doesn't look good. And uh, Ronnie is, without a question, one of the outstanding defensive players as a linebacker. He is the leading tackler for the uh, Southview Saints coming into this ball game tonight. He had a total of 70 tackles, 7-0. That's a lot of tackles for one young man. The give to the big fullback. One tackler missing, continuing up close to the 25-yard line. That being Eric Ridnauer. Well, Ron, with uh, up three scores, uh, Tony's going to be very happy to uh, let Painesville Harvey give the ball to the fullback and run five yards at a time. He's uh, he'd be more willing to do that. What you don't want now is a big play to get him back in the game. And with nine minutes left, just let him take the ball down the field. Southview Saints leading this ball game by 17 points, 31 to 14, with nine minutes and 20 seconds remaining. The clock continues to run, and it's Lamasny back to pass. Could not hang on, incomplete. And the intended receiver was Ray McLean. So I said earlier, Ron, you know, being a defensive-minded coach, the statistics sometimes don't really show the, the effort that your kids play the game. Here's a case where Tony's going to let them have 50 yards if they need it. 
just keep the clock running. And, and then at the end of the game, they say, well, they gained this many yards on you. Well, you didn't play quite the way you wanted to by the score dictating what you should do. And the bottom line is the final score. Lamazny passing again, the intended receiver, this time hanging on, Ray McLean. Picks up another first down for the Red Raiders out to the 36-yard line, first and 10. Was he the young man that just dropped the pass before yes. that? And there, there, there's, a, there's a good move by their coaching staff to come right back to him. It was basically the same play. Catch the ball this time. Look it into your chest, put your hands on it, then run with it. To come right back to him on third down is, is, is a good call on their, their part. From their 36-yard line, first and 10. And the reception made this time by Mike Nicholas. There's another case, Ron. Sean Nixon just laid back instead of going up for the interception and maybe not getting it and letting him turn for a big gain. He just waited, let the young man catch the ball, tackled him for a three-yard gain, four-yard gain, and the clock keeps going. Well, we'll make it a three-yard gain at the 40. It's second down and seven. And uh, looking on the sidelines here, this uh, Soto looks uh, in a lot of pain, Ron. Here comes the big fullback, Rittenauer to the 40, the 35 still on his feet, finally brought down from behind as he gets up close to the 25-yard line. A lot of missed tackles on the big guy, Brian Joyner finally bringing him down. There's another sophomore that Tony will have for a couple of years. His dad, the former head coach here at uh, Southview. First and 10 for the Red Raiders from the Southview 25 yard line. Eight minutes remaining in the ball game. Red Raiders threatening to score. Odell Parker split wide to the left. Lamaz need to pass and almost intercepted by Marquell Miller. He had it in his hands, could not hang on. He would have had as many interceptions in this ball game as he's had all season if he would have been able to hang on to that one. Ron, I just as, as he uh, missed that ball, he knew he should have had it. He, he hit his hand on the ground, and it reminded me of uh, a young man that played for me at Admiral King, John Matakovich, probably one of the toughest kids I've ever seen play, and uh, broke his hand exactly that way. Fortunately, uh, the ground is soft with all the rain we've had this past week. And uh, he, he played uh, five weeks with a broken hand. They cut the cast off on Friday. He played, put the cast back on on Saturday. Lamazny back to pass again over to the far side. And it's knocked away. Sean Nixon covering defensively out there in the far corner along with Stephen Rivera. And Eric, Eric Jimenez, Jimenez put a great rush on the quarterback and uh, gave him a pretty good pop after he threw the ball. So, Southview's still coming at him. They're not uh, laying down and letting him go down the field. They're, they're making him play for everything. Third and 10 for the Red Raiders. A big play coming up for them. As Odell Parker brings the play in from the bench. And it's a trap play, and it's Odell Parker with the ball, and he is hit on the 25-yard line. Josh Henderson making that tackle. You know, Ron, I don't know how much defense Marquell Miller played early in the season, but with the uh, dismissal of uh, Jeff Hughes and uh, Jason Messer having to play offense, uh, Marquell seems to be playing quite a defensive safety over there. Well, he's been playing his fair share of defense throughout the season. Like we say, coming into this ball game, he had three interceptions. But now he's playing every down. He's out there yes. now every play. <laughs> well, like the old saying goes, and we've seen it and heard it so often in the locker rooms, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. And here's a case where Coach Tony Shoulders does not have the personnel he had at the beginning of the season. So those that are left behind are really rising to the occasion as Lamassey is hit and brought down for a big loss on that fourth down play and making the tackle, 
Josh Henderson. You know, I'm kind of glad we don't have to pick a player of the game like uh, EOL does because it'd be a little difficult for us to do that. Terrence Beard's run the ball very well. Marquel Miller's played great on both sides of the ball, catching it and, and interceptions. Uh, Josh Henderson's tipped one. He's uh, made a couple of sacks for losses. Even though the Tony don't have the, the caliber of players that he had at the beginning of the year, this team looks much, much more cohesive tonight than we've seen them all year. And the officials are stopping the clock. And especially, Ron, they, they've, they've, come, they've come back from two uh, pretty good uh, beatings. I mean, Admiral King... Put it on them two weeks ago, 34 nothing. They got beat last week, 55-14. And they've turned around this week and uh, put it all together and they've played a great football game. My hat's, my hat's off to uh, Tony and his staff for uh, bringing kids back. It's hard to bring them back two tough losses like that, plus the injuries. Well, the scoreboard clock keeper ran 15 seconds off that should not have been run off so they've added that time to the clock and we're all set Southview Saints on the first and 10 a loss on the play loss of uh, just a foot or so it'll be second down and a long 10 as we are now under six minutes of play As we've indicated, the Southview Saints will wrap up this 2001 high school football season next week Friday when they travel to take on a tough Lake Erie League team, the Euclid Panthers. We'll be back here next week Friday. The Admiral King Admirals will also be taking a very tough stance against an extremely tough team, Bedford. And the pass by Messer almost intercepted by the Red Raiders. Aaron Humphreys, again, he had his hands on the ball, just couldn't hold on. Well, Ron, with this being week nine, um, high school basketball is right around the corner. Yes, it is. An indication is the um, first meeting for the Lorain County uh, Referees Association is this Monday. And so basketball season is um, several weeks away. Right around Thanksgiving is normally when they start. The late. girls start a week early and the boys start the first, I think, the December 1st is the first boys game. Third down and 10 for the Southview Saints. Messer looking to pass, but shovels off. Gives the ball to John Brown. Brown's got a first down. He's across the midstripe, across the 45, inside the 45. They'll spot it on the 44. What a great play that was. Messer faking the pass, just shoveled ahead to John Brown. Brown going to the Red Raiders 44-yard line, first and 10 for the Southview Saints. Clock stop momentarily with 5-11 remaining in the ball game. That's a play we haven't seen or anything. That was coming off that uh, trap, so that was uh, a nice call there. Terrence Beard getting the ball across the 40, still on his feet up to the 35-yard line. He'll be shy of a first down by a body yard. Pickup of nine yards on the play. It'll be second down and one. I kind of look for Tony just to put the ball down now, keep it on the ground, run the clock out. If you score, you score. Comfortable lead now. I think Tony's going to take all the time he can. Well, Tony Shoulders being the class act that he is, that would not surprise me in the least. Just run the clock out. The Saints have a very comfortable lead and a score they can be proud of. Again, Terrence Beard, the ball carrier, he's hit at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a loss of a yard on the play. It'll be third down and two. As Tim Alcorn said the day Wednesday we were here, win with class. And Tony is uh, definitely in the definition of that word. You know, I'm sorry I couldn't be here with you to do that seventh and eighth grade uh, middle school football. And we did it last year. We had a good time yes, with that. It was a did. lot of fun. But it took uh, Tim three quarters before he called him Southview, though. And then it was the rest of the night. It was the uh, Southview Warriors. Southview. Okay. <laughs> Messer on a third down play going to pass, but he's keeping the ball. He's got a first down as he crosses the 25-yard line. First and 10 for the Southview Saints. Beautiful running play by Jason Messer. 
The ball is on the 24. Ron, you put so much more pressure on the defense when the quarterback can run. The defenders don't know whether to play the pass or the run. That's just an unbelievable asset to have a quarterback that can turn and run like that. Three minutes and ten seconds remaining in the ball game. John Brown in motion coming to the near side. Messer with the ball. Fake the pass. He's running. And there's a flag. Messer to the 10. Messer brought down on around the seven yard line. We'll see what the flag is all about. When the umpire throws the flag run, it's 99% time holding. And there's two flags on the field. One on about the 23 yard line in the middle and one on the far side on about the 18 yard line. Got a clip and a hold. The, the hold's going to be on the uh, flag that's closest to us, Ron, and the flag on the outside is going to be a clip. Only one will count, however, right? That's correct. Okay. And they're both major penalty. Major so, penalty. well, they're going to take the hold because it was back further. So they gain about five yards if they take that penalty. Ball is brought back to the 38-yard line. Was it? The clip was closest? Yes, the clip is what they called hmm. the flag in the uh, middle of the field. Usually when he throws that flag, it's going to be a hold. But I think they did that just to make us look bad, Ron. Our producer director didn't get down close enough to That's why we need, as Tim Alcorn said, we need Mike the officials. Someday, someday. I wonder if year. Channel 30 has mic officials. No. <laughs> Some corporation donated something to uh, give them mic officials. Messer fakes the handoff to Beard, gives it off to Sean Nixon. Nixon still on his feet, stumbles and gets up and moves the ball to inside the 20 yard line. He picked up so much of that yardage, lost on the penalty, and then some. Ron, he was tripped up about halfway down his run. He doesn't get that trip. He doesn't get touched. He's in the end zone. But he kept his balance and was able to go for another six or seven yards. So they got back uh, most of the penalty plus. So It's second down and six. And we're in four down territory, so we're just going to see him run the football. Most importantly, the clock continues to run as we're approaching two minutes. The give to John Brown. Brown gets the ball to the 20. There'll be no gain on the play. It'll be third down and six. Ron, even though Painesville has three timeouts, I, I don't see them calling a timeout. They, they need three scores, so stopping it here is not going to make a difference. And I, and I would think, Ron, if you counted up penalty yards, I don't think Southview had that many this evening. So for a supposedly undisciplined uh, inner city team, they've uh, played quite well. They have played remarkably well. I am totally impressed and look forward in the years to come, Lord willing, to be able to call games for the Southview Saints. Sean Nixon, the ball carrier, doesn't quite get up to the line of scrimmage. Jamie Farron making the stop for the Red Raiders. They'll put the ball on the 21. A loss of a yard on the play. It's fourth down and seven. Now Painesville's called timeout. And we do have a timeout on the field now with a minute and four seconds remaining in the ball game. Southview leading by 17, 31 to 14. You know, I was talking about this article written by Teresa Newhoff in the uh, morning journals at the edge about uh, Alicia Reyes. And just in case you missed the article, she begins to write, everyone told her she couldn't do it. There's no way you can play football, friends and family told junior Alicia Reyes of Southview. There's no way you're going to go through with it. You'll end up quitting. Well, Reyes did not listen to her doubters. Instead, she started weightlifting in the spring, went through two a days in the summer, and earned a spot on Southview's JV football team. In blowout, she even gets in for a few plays on the varsity. 
So far, we have not seen her in this ball game. I don't know if she's out there. No, she's on the sideline. There she is. You can see her. That is Alicia Reyes with the ponytail, no less. Bless her heart. I mean, my hat, if I had one on, goes out to that young lady. I am impressed, not only with the team that I'm seeing here tonight, with the job that Tony Shoulders has done and the way these young men have risen to the occasion, but uh, the fact that here's the first young lady in the history of Lorraine football to come out and play. We are under a minute now. Turn the ball over. It's going to be, I think uh, Tony's very happy to give them the ball with 58 seconds left. They, they ran off at least four minutes of the clock, which is all he was looking to do at this point in time. It's a first and uh, 10 for the Red Raiders. The ball on their own 18-yard line. Lamazny passing, incomplete pass covering on the play for the Saints. Brian Joyner uh, as his, had his hands on it. As his dad just walked by, one of the coaches up in the press box, passed by with uh, Scotty Bryan, whose father was a head coach at Southview at one time and played for Woody at Ohio State. All in the family. Chuck Bryant. The Boomer. The Boomer. As he's affectionately referred to. Once upon a time, the Southview High School faculty manager. Clock was stopped on the incomplete pass. 54 seconds remaining. Lamazny back to pass again. This time he hits Rain McLean. Well, we got a penalty. Rain McLean on the far side finally knocked out of bounds, but there is a flag down on the 15 yard line. Ron, Sometime this week um, coming, the viewers will be able to see the, some of the middle school game. And what a thrill for those young kids to come out and play in George Daniel, the same field that their older brothers or cousins play on and maybe their parents played here. And we had both uh, middle schools play the seventh grade and the eighth grade game. And uh, I know you're having a good time at the Willie concert. And Willie Nelson. Tim stepped in and did an admirable. in 15 minutes nonstop. Tim stepped in and did an admirable job. But what a thrill, and the crowd to see the people here to see these kids play it was a win-win situation for the entire city of Lorraine. And hopefully these young men will continue their efforts when they get on to high school. And the city of Lorraine's football prominence will again reappear. On the reception, Ray McLean. Picks up a first down for the Red Raiders, getting out of bounds, stopping the clock with 36 <laughs> seconds remaining. If, if you see Tony Shoulders uh, talking to uh, Brian Joyner, he hit him on the head there to say that uh, Joyner went for the interception. He saw six all the way, and Tony's saying, son, if you're going to do that, catch the ball and go with it. Otherwise, they were able to, to make a 10-yard gain. From their 31, first and 10, LaMassey attempting to pass again. Ray McLean incomplete, second down and 10. I'm not quite sure why Painesville just doesn't uh, run the ball a couple times and get out of this. Want to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors. First Federal Savings and Loan of Lorraine, Impressions at Tower Boulevard and Oberlin Avenue in Lorraine, and the Palace Civic Center, 6th and Broadway in Lorraine, for helping to make these games possible. We look forward to their involvement in the basketball season when, again, TV20 will bring you high school basketball. On the reception, Odell Parker. Parker picks up another first down for the Red Raiders. Tackle made by Armando Rivera. Clock is stopped with 22 seconds remaining and the Red Raiders call a timeout. Checking the scoring in this football game during this timeout, going back to the first quarter with 5.52 remaining in the first quarter, the Saints were the first to go on the scoreboard on a 35-yard field goal by Josh Fossey. Then at 4.11 remaining in the first quarter, a 40-yard run by Terrence Beard with Fossey's point after good. The Southview Saints led 10-0. 
In the second quarter with 9.27 remaining, a 25-yard run by Terrence Beard with Fossey's point after good. The Saints had a 17 to nothing uh, lead. And then all of a sudden, it was the Red Raiders coming into full bloom with 7.13 remaining, an 18-yard run by the quarterback, Tim Lamassey, and a Frankie Spikes point after good. It was 17-7. And then in the closing moments of the second quarter, a one-yard run by Frankie Spikes, and his own PAT made it 17-14. And that's the score when the two teams went into the locker room. On a completed pass to the near sideline, making the reception, Lucas Gibson, and the stop made by Sean Nixon. Out of bounds, and the clock stopped with 12 minutes oh, remaining. They just dumped, uh, I don't know if Joe can get a picture of Tony's shoulders, but they just dumped him. <laughs> they put the ice bucket. Either the ice bucket or the Gatorade bucket or something. <laughs> <laughs> He's pointing. Somebody's in trouble come Monday. Lamasney on the pass and almost intercepted. Uh, Sean Ron, Nixon I think, was uh, going for it. <laughs> I think <laughs> and Mar Markwell, Markwell Miller had it. Nixon knocked it away from him. I oh think that's my. why he's on the ground. <laughs> Markwell Miller had it in his sights just waiting for it, and Nixon just knocked it away from him. And you see what Markwell Miller did. He went over and helped Sean back up to his feet. And, but if we had instant replay uh, capabilities, we could uh, all view that. But someday, Ron, someday, someday. Someday. Six seconds remaining in the ball game. Lamasney and back to pass. Possible last play, and Sean Nixon on the interception. He is brought down, and that's the end of the ball game. Southview winning 31 to 14. Oh, they just uh, they just dumped Tony again. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll be. That back. referee says I don't want to get too close to you. We'll be back to wrap it up right after this timeout. Since 1921, your hometown financial professionals at First Federal Savings of Lorraine have dedicated themselves to meeting the financial needs of their customers and surrounding communities. They offer a wide variety of financial investments as well as home mortgages to meet your every need. Loans on boats, cars, mobile homes, and other worthwhile purchases are also available. Whatever your financial need, First Federal Savings of Lorraine is ready to help. Seven convenient locations to serve you in Lorraine, Huron, Sandusky, Port Clinton, and now at 36690 Detroit Road in Avon. First Federal Savings of Lorraine is an equal housing lender and FDIC insured. Bill Harvey's Red Raiders came into George Daniel Stadium with a 3-5 record. They leave with a 3-6. The Southview Saints were 2-6. Uh, now they are 3-6. So both these teams with identical records, and it's a great victory for Southview. Your thoughts and your comments on the game, Barry. Well, as we said earlier, Ron, you, Southview had taken uh, two pretty good uh, beatings the last two weeks. And uh, for Tony to come back and get his team ready for this game with the amount of injuries and a third-string quarterback and all the underclassmen, this is just something that they can just really build on. We talked about the scoring going into the uh, third uh, quarter and the uh, second half. We didn't get a chance to complete that. The Southview Saints going into the locker room with a three-point advantage, 17-14. to However, in the third quarter with 4.49 remaining, on an 11-yard pass play from Jason Messer to John Brown with Fossey's point after good, the Southview Saints went ahead 24-14. And then a 13-yard run by Terrence Beard with Fossey's point after also good again, 31-14, that being our final score. A big victory for the Southview Saints. Very impressed with the team that they have now that all the problems have been taken care of and the fact, as we've indicated so often, Barry, Tony Shoulders has a team of mainly underclassmen. Coming back next year, this is going to be a big, big help for him with a lot of experience for these underclassmen. And you can see how excited the kids were. They, uh, they got uh, Tony kind of wet at the end of the game. They dumped the teams that are 8-2, and 9-1. and one aren't having as much fun, I don't think, as the, the kids from Southview did tonight and uh, pulled up a major, major win for the Southview program. Well, the uh, Southview High School marching band came onto the field, did a little snake routine. The players stayed out there longer than normal celebrating. It's got to feel good to win, and they won 
big, especially after the statements that were written in the Painesville uh, newspaper about this undisciplined team and that uh, the Red Raiders were certainly going and, to come back and, with and a victory. And it shows that the undisciplined team, I think, was the team in white. They had three, inter three or four interceptions, a couple of fumbles, uh, big costly penalties. They dropped three balls they should have intercepted. It was that team that did not come to play tonight. And we've talked a lot tonight about the television facilities that Painesville brought here. I just want to close by saying, truly, uh, TV20 has been doing such a fantastic job under the directorship of our new producer and director, Joe Bach, and uh, it would certainly be an asset to Lorraine City Schools and to TV20 if we could get the kind of help that they had in Painesville. If you're interested, please give him a call at 282-8400, 282 282-8400. 8400. Barry Buck and I will be back here next week, Friday, for the finale of the high school season prior to the playoffs, where the Lorraine Admiral King Admirals will entertain Bedford, and that should be quite a ball game. Bedford is the team that uh, beat Avon Lake, and Avon Lake is ranked number one in the state of Ohio in Division II. So you can understand with that. We've got quite a ball game to look forward to next week, Friday. Until then, for my partner, Barry Buck. Our producer and director and cameraman, Joe Bach, I'm Ron Bacalar. Good night, everyone. This has been a production of Lorraine City Schools, TV 20, WLCS. Sleep, my love.